it, it actually works perfectly. Hi, I'm Baron, and when I'm not playing Bloodborne backwards or trying to be Elden Ring with my toe, I like to relax with one of my favourite games, Morrowind. Oh, wait, yeah, these guys. Okay, fine, let's play Skyrim in the most torturous way possible instead. Can you beat Skyrim with poison only? Yeah, sure, just whack a load of poisons onto your sword and hit everything. Well, no. See, if I poke a poison sword through your face, it's probably not the poison that's killing you there. And that's a problem in Skyrim, because even its worst weapon, the Lowly Fork, still does a massive one damage, which, as any mathematician can tell you, is a number bigger than zero. So, even putting poison on a fork isn't poison only. Guess we're gonna have to get more creative then. So, here's the rules. I have to beat the main quest. Also, because this is a poison themed run, I have to beat the Dragonborn DLC and the Dark Brotherhood questline, as it centers around a plot to poison someone. I can only directly damage enemies using poison. Friendly NPCs are exempt from this rule because... reasons. Companions that naturally join you to help as part of a quest are fine, but I'm not allowed to bring other random followers along to kill things for me. Sorry mate. Non-damaging shouts and spells are fine, but no conjuration and no lydia your enemies off a cliff edge. And, of course, if the locals want to get involved too, who am I to spoil their fun? I decided to do this run on Master Difficulty, simply because Legendary just makes this incredibly tedious. I started a test run on Legendary, and the first dragon took 45 minutes to take down, and I wanted to strike a balance between a challenge and not literally dying of boredom. With all that said, let's dive in. If you're new here, please consider subscribing so my wheat crops survive the winter, and don't forget our sponsor for the video, Silda's Vegan Sweet Rolls giving you all the sweet, sweet roll taste of home without any of the burnt skeeva bits. Warning, sweet rolls may contain up to 30% pocket lint. This is the tale of our dragonborn hero The challenges faced and the paths we must take Let's begin at the start In a rickety cart Here Hey, you! You're finally awake! Much like real life, the game began with my slow inexorable crawl towards death. One of my new friends played the pincushion game, the Imperials had no idea who I was, but decided they might as well kill me anyway, understandable, and it was time to make my character. What are you? An idiot sandwich. I chose Breton for the alchemy bonus and low starting sneak skill, made myself look beautiful for the chopping block, and then Alduin turned up to piss on everyone's chips. Good timing. I chose to follow Hadvar purely on the basis that his door is slightly closer, and then let him do all the heavy lifting inside. Now, although I would be playing the game on Master, for now I had the difficulty set to Legendary for the tutorial, which makes Hadvar an absolute tank. Aw, oh, bless him, sometimes he gets a bit sleepy though. After making sure to pick up the dagger here, we pushed forwards and it was time for some levelling. Now, in order to have a viable way to do damage for this run, I would need to reach level 30 as soon as possible to unlock a certain quest. And there are various ways to level up fast in Skyrim, the first being during the tutorial. See, when you reach the bear cave, you can just crouch behind Hadvar and hit him with a dagger for a stealth attack. Because he'll never aggro onto you, he doesn't class as an enemy, so he's exempt from my rules. And he also can't be killed, as he's essential. Once I'd leveled up once, I took the first sneak perk and kept going. Sorry mate, it's for a good cause, plus it's therapeutic. My goal was to hit 100 sneak but a bonus side effect of this is you'll also level up one-handed. That would be of absolutely no use to me for this run, but it still helped me to get up to level 18. 
I gently wiped the blood off Hadvar and whispered that everything would be okay. Shh, shh. And we snuck out of the cave for the real Skyrim to begin. After changing the difficulty to Master, it was time to head to Riverwood, stopping off at the Guardian Stones along the way. Now, if you're trying to power level in Skyrim, it's always worth activating the relevant stone first. So, I took the Thief Stone for now, let Hadvar pet the dogs, listen to Alvor being a classic boomer before taking all his worldly possessions, got invited to join the Dawn Guard, because apparently I look like the kind of idiot who enjoys getting their face chewed off by vampires, sold everything I didn't need, and moved onwards to Whiterun. What? What did you do? The first stop on my power levelling tour of the lands was Windhelm, a friendly town full of colourful locals. Hey, maybe the reason these Greyskins don't help in the war is because they're Imperial spies. See? So rich and vibrant. Luckily, I didn't have to spend any time in their company, as I was here for one person only, the incomparable beauty that is Sildur. Up to no good, are we? Train one pickpocketing level with her, drop a quick save in case of failure, and flex your newfound skills by stealing your money right back. Todd, I think this game might be a bit broken, mate. I'm sorry, I didn't know. I made sure not to take a level up until I trained as much as I could, as you can only do this five times per level, and kept the loop up until I passed 40 pickpocket, which allowed me to unlock Lightfingers 3, Night Thief, and, most importantly, Poisoned, which allows you to poison other people by placing poisons in their pockets. Have I said the word poison enough yet? Next up, Dawnstar. Over in this corner by the mine, you can find a chest. It's full of good stuff. Go ahead and just take it. Nobody can stop you. Todd, what are you doing, Todd? The main things I was interested in here were any enchanted items, anything of value I could sell, charged soul gems and alchemy ingredients, mainly salt piles and wheat. I stopped off nearby to disenchant everything I could to boost my enchanting skill, and then stood over here and waited. This triggers the Khajiit caravan to arrive, which would... Uh... Who the hell are you? Well, this is awkward. I tried to get the local constabulary to help me out, but they seemed more interested in giving me the latest gossip. So, I switched to the OP tactic of hiding on a tall rock. Okay, are we done now? Back to the traders. See, the chest I just looted is actually their inventory chest. And because Skyrim just works, if you drop a quicksave, hit a vendor, and instantly reload the quicksave, it restocks their inventory. Which in this case, means the chest. So, I guess Khajiit has wares, even if you don't have coin. Psst, psst, psst. Here, kitty, kitty. I did the Dawnstar loop for a while to boost my enchanting and speech skills, as well as making me filthy rich. But I did have an end goal in mind, which was to find a piece of loot with the Fortify Alchemy enchantment on it. Todd said, No. So I went to Solitude instead and just bought a necklace from Radiant Raymond. <sighs> Should have just done that to begin with. It was finally time to enter Whiterun. So, after convincing the guards I was there to help, I repaid their hospitality by stripping down every plant in sight before sneaking into Dragon's Reach to steal a bunch of silver. These guys are way too trusting. Trespasser! Do you get to the Cloud District very often? Oh, what am I saying? For my next trick, I would need three things. A set of Fortify Alchemy gear, a big stack of ingredients, and at least 40 in the alchemy skill. For the gear, I already had a helmet and gauntlets I could enchant. I used the silver I stole to craft a ring and necklace and enchanted them all with Fortify Alchemy. Next, I boosted my alchemy skill with a combination of crafting health potions and training with Arcadia until I hit 40 and unlocked these perks. The first three are essential to what comes next. Finally, it was time for some ingredients. And this seems like a good place to give you all a rest from my voice.
Todd, come here, honey. It's time for your daily game breaking. This one's a Skyrim classic. So settle in for the rest of the loop. Equip all four pieces of your Fortify Alchemy gear and craft one restoration potion using either Longfin or Spade Tail along with a salt pile. Nice. Quit Alchemy, drink your little prime energy drink, unequip the Alchemy gear and re-equip it. Huh. Make another restoration potion. Interesting. Chug it like you're at a frat party. Get your kit off again like... Uh... You're at a frat party? Put it back on because you're actually quite shy and keep repeating the loop. Holy shit. Okay, that's dumb enough. With the effects still active, I made a bunch more Resto potions, some Fortify Enchanting potions, and a big pile of high potency poisons. The more valuable the potion I made, the faster I could level up. Finally, I waited for the effects to wear off and made some normal strength paralysis poisons. Now, at this point, it's worth mentioning that you can completely break the game by just making OP smithing and enchanting potions to max your gear out. But I wasn't going to do that. With all that said, I completed a few random activities to push myself up to level 30, and I was ready to deal some damage. Looking to protect yourself or deal some damage? Bruh, I literally just answered that. High in the snowy peaks above Windhelm sits the shrine of the Daedric Prince Boethia, which in practical terms means it's a hangout for edgy weirdos. Yeah, sure, I'll lure an innocent person here and kill them for your sex party. Sounds fun. Meet Belrand, my date for the night. Okay, babes, now you just wait here, yeah? Time to remove the cultists from the equation with some stealth. Quick save for safety, pickpocket, and... Yeah. The higher the value of an item, the lower the chance to pickpocket. But there is a way round this. Place a paralysis poison in their pocket instead. You fool, you fell victim to one of the classic blunders. Spam the button on their body until you can enter their inventory again, and now place the deadly poison. Perfect, with the added bonus you can assemble a great collection of corpses. With all the cultists taken care of, I told Belran to tie himself to a magic pole so we could have some fun. Sadly, you can't pickpocket him when he's restrained. But I did the next best thing, which was to lure a frost troll up the hill to claw his face off. You go there, buddy. You'll get him soon. My shenanigans hadn't gone unnoticed by Boethia, who commanded me to slay their current champion and all his men. So I took myself off to Knife Point Ridge to stealthily kill every... I said to stealthily... God damn it, to stealthily... You know what, fuck it, that's tomorrow's problem. After more creeping and paralysing antics, I clambered onto the roof of the shack the champion was sitting in, dropped in to say hi, and offered him a stiff drink. Now, give me that armour! The ebony mail is a very special piece of armour for two reasons. One, it looks sick! And two, it has a special effect that does slow constant poison damage to any aggroed enemy close by. Nice. So, how good is it? Well, it's crap. Taking out the rest of the gang showed me just what a ball ache this was going to be. But luckily, a bunch of Thalmor randomly showed up and kicked everyone's butt, I made a glorious escape, and I was finally ready for some main quest action. Listen to the sound of the call of the Gravis Listen to the voice of Alduin The crown grows dark from the shadows of dragon wings This is the tale of the Dover King Let's see here. I've got a letter and a lot of gold. Something about it being your, uh, oh, inheritance. Oh, and sorry for your loss.
I should probably be feeling bad about this, right? After speaking to Jarl Balgruf, Chinny McChinface gave me a very important mission, I unlocked a couple of perks, enchanted my armour and shield with some useful boosts, and it was off to Bleak Falls Barrow. I originally intended to fight everything here, but yeah, that might take a while. Plan B, just run. I danced with a spider as we tried to outpoison each other, carefully freed Arvel the Swift, who swiftly ran away to a swift death at the hands of Draugr, legged it past everything else using the blade traps to thin the crowd, and opened up the door. Alright, I can hear you, no need to shout. Killing this guy took just over 20 minutes, and the experience can be summarised by this tea towel in my kitchen. Here's your stupid tablet, I hope it was worth it. The guards brought news of a dragon attack, I took the novice restoration perk, and headed off down the yellow brick road to fight my first dragon. When I say fight, I mean mostly hide. This setup absolutely sucks against dragons, so the white run god did the majority of the work. Look, I'm helping! Killing the dragon helped me to discover I was actually a Karen, which got the manager's attention, the Yarl rewarded me by gifting me a pack donkey, and I clambered up to High Hrothgar head office to meet the Greybeards and shout at them. I speak for the Greybeards. That's brown. After teaching me the Naruto run shout, I was tasked with retrieving the horn of Jurgen Windcaller. Why? No idea. Get it yourself, you lazy c. Upon returning to Whiterun, I was accosted by some representatives of the Solstheim Tourist Board, who said, Oi, Mirak said he'll fight you after school outside KFC. Think I'm scared, mate? Okay, maybe a little bit. I was mainly here to grab a couple of useful things, but this turned out to be a longer process than I'd expected. Step one was to visit Tal Mithrin to speak to Talvus. Unfortunately, he's a massive idiot who summoned an Ash Guardian, and he refused to speak to me until I killed it, which involved another 20 minutes of running around in circles. Step 2 was to reach 50 restoration, and I had various ways of doing this. Afia Velothi inside the Raven Rock Mine can train you, you can read all the skill books, and you can let the Wind Gate at High Hrothgar damage you and then heal up. At 40 restoration, Talvus starts selling the Poison Rune spell, but until I hit 50 restoration and unlock the Adept Restoration perk, I didn't have enough Magicka to cast this yet. Finally, step 3 involved getting chomped by a dragon, getting rid of bugs, which is more than the devs ever did, and mining some Heartstone for Neloth before being tasked with finding his assistant. Yep, she did. Neloth gave precisely zero shits, which as any mathematician will tell you, is a number smaller than one. So after finding him a replacement, he rewarded me with the key to his room, which gave me access to the black book, The Hidden Twilight. Reading the black book transports you to Apocrypha, the realm of the Daedric Prince Hermaeus Mora, a Cthulhu-esque poisonous nightmare of freakish beings. Basically, a bit like Birmingham. The goal here is to work your way through 8 chapters of the book to reach the end, but there is a way to skip most of it. Off to the right over there is actually chapter 7, and there are ways to cross the poison waters safely. A fully upgraded whirlwind sprint would do it, but I didn't have that. So the next option was what would actually turn out to be the most important shout of the run. Become ethereal. Which I learned the first word of from a word wall in Lost Valley Redoubt. This shout makes you completely invincible while active, as long as you don't perform any actions, so it can help you survive the poison. Or not. Okay, next plan. Donate my life savings to this guy, come back a few days later, and head into the barrow. I ignored the actual quest as I was only here for one thing. Azadal's boots of water walking. These boots turn you into Skyrim Jesus, and after gracefully gliding across the foul water, 
I avoided all the enemies and continued to the end of chapter 8 to claim my prize. Mora's Agony. Casting Mora's Agony on the ground creates a mass of tentacles that stagger and poison enemies that come into contact with them. It can be pretty effective, and although it's a greater power, which means it can only be used once a day, you can just wait 24 hours every time you're out of combat to replenish it. Go ahead, they can't stop you. Right, get me out of this hellhole. Fine, I'll get you silly little trinket. Now I had become ethereal, I had no need to hang around. So I sprinted past pretty much everything inside Ustengrav to find my reward. An invitation to dinner from a secret admirer. Oh, it's just you. I already gave you the horn. I'm trying really hard not to make an obvious joke here, Delphine. Really hard. After returning the horn to Arngear, the Greybeards showed off the sub base in their new sound system, and I trekked up to Kynesgrove with Daphne to take on a dragon. Become Ethereal is incredibly useful against surviving dragon attacks at high difficulty settings, and if you get an Amulet of Talos and the Blessing of Talos, your shout cooldown is vastly reduced, so you can cast it pretty frequently. Which helps, because dragons like to just do this, or this. Hitboxes are just a suggestion in this game. Mora's Agony wasn't that useful here, A Slocknir would just fly away instead of stepping in it, and I could only use it once in the fight, so Derek here would need to put in some hard yards. I made sure to buy the heal other spell to keep her on her feet, and after another 20 minutes of running around and shouting myself hoarse, Slocknir fell, and it was time for a celebratory party. Woohoo! The next section of the game was a breeze, which made a nice change. I snuck past everyone in the embassy and then made a run for the dossier, funneled the riffraff into a corner and slowly took them out with my foul body odour, headed over to Riften to rescue old Esburn from the ratways while humiliating some more Thalmor in the process, ignored everything on the way to Skyhaven Temple, waited eight years for Esburn to shut the hell up, and returned to the Greybeards to learn the clear skies shout and meet their master, Party Snacks. Do you know why I live here? No, but I'm sure you'll spend the next 20 minutes telling me. There once was a dragonborn, evil and wicked, and his name was Mirak, to be more specific. He wore an ice mask, had a poisonous staff, and his house is a nice place to visit. In a subtle reference to the title of the game, Parthenax told me that in order to learn the shout to defeat Alduin, I would need to find an Elder Scroll. And although I knew exactly where to find one, I also knew I would have to fight Alduin afterwards. And I wanted more tools in my arsenal for that. So I returned to Solstheim to do something twice as difficult instead. Great. Outside the Temple of Mirak in the center of the island, I met Freya, who is basically the main character from AC Valhalla, with the added bonus that you don't actually have to play AC Valhalla. Don't. It's awful. And she suggested we delve inside to explore and meet the locals. In this case, the locals were a friendly combo of cultists and draugr out to kill us. But despite Freya getting distracted by everything like a cat with a laser pointer, my deadly combo of hentai carpet, sewer gas, and dancing around people with my rotten stench got us through. We took down the gatekeeper together in a surprising display of teamwork. I decided that the last group of enemies just weren't worth the trouble and ran past everyone to reach the Black Book. Reading the book transported me back to Birmingham, where I met Mirak for the first time, a massive poser who bragged about how huge his balls were and then made an exit stage left while his backup dancers sang me into a coma. That was worth it. Freya took me home to meet her dad. A uh, bit soon for that, isn't it? We've just met. And he told me to go clean some graffiti off a stone or something. Bruh, I want some of what you're on. A wise man once told me, why stand and fight when you can simply turn invincible and run? 
After learning the first word of the bend will shout, I headed onwards to cleanse the windstone. And this is where I met my match. Cleansing the stone summons a lurker, and these guys are no joke. They are powerful enemies that hit like a truck, spew poison tentacles everywhere, and have a ton of HP. But that's not the real issue. See, they have absolutely insane HP regen, and even with all the tools at my disposal, I simply couldn't get its health down quicker than it could regen it. So, I needed a different strat. First, I tried luring it to some nearby pirates. They were about as useful as an origami fireplace, so I baited it to the Skull Village instead, where I showed my encouragement while the villagers took turns hacking it down. Oh boy, I hope I don't have to deal with any more of those things! Yeah, that can definitely wait. For now, I needed more knowledge on black books, and after doing some more grinding at the smithy to unlock arcane blacksmith and upgrade my gear, I returned to Nelof because I felt like being patronised some more. He told me that the black book I needed was in a dwarven ruin called Enchar... Enchar... Yeah, anyway. So we set out across the Ashlands together, a frost dragon showed up, which was no problem because Nelof might be an arrogant ass, but he's also a finely tuned killing machine. Then an invisible invincible Mirak appeared and shouted at everyone non-stop because this game is more broken than my serotonin receptors. I'm having fun guys! Nelof the Beast destroyed everything in his path on our way into the ruins, and then we progressed inside taking out hordes of dwarven constructs while solving a series of puzzles. At this point, it's worth mentioning the main perk of the Become Ethereal Shell. The armor's poison effect is still active even while you're ethereal, so you can just walk around enemies safely and then switch to shield to block while waiting for the cooldown to end. Pretty useful. After dispatching the last of the machines back to the big scrapyard in the sky, we activated the steam mechanism and release the black book from its housing. Oh good, be sure to say hello to Hamea's Laura for me if you... Oh great, here again, guess we're running. And run is what I did, until I reached the epistolary acumen black book, which granted me an audience with Hamea's Mora himself, who is basically my body double. Mora dangled the carrot of the second word of Bendwill before me, before beating me with the shitty stick of having to convince the Skull to give up their secrets, because he really wants to know how they make such delicious Hawker and Snowberry pie. It's really good pie. Storn wasn't giving up his secret blend of 11 herbs and spices that easily though, and told me to go and torture myself at the stone some more. This time, I wanted to be more prepared, so I decided to unlock the rest of the Become Ethereal shell. First, to Ironbind Barrow, where a couple of bickering looters helped me take down a Death Lord on my way to the Word Wall before escaping. And then back to Ustengrav, where I'd completely neglected to learn the word earlier. I'd still need more souls to unlock the full shell, but the easiest way to do that was to just fast travel between cities until a dragon showed up and then let the guards deal with it. Cheers, pal. Glad I could be of help. Well, now, look at number one. He was trying to act hard. Till I took him to a party with the Raven Rock Gods. Next when in from round two, I said, yeah, yeah. And left him to get mugged by the skull of Freya. The fuck got treated like a pinata by a group of Reavers while I stood doing nada. Yeah, luck and then there's the fourth one. The last stone spawns in a lurker guardian, and these guys are something else. The dragon that also decided to swing its dick in my face barely tickled the guardian. A nearby reaver couldn't touch it. I tried getting it to glitch and fall off a cliff, but no dice, and nothing else was of much help. Until I found a family of Netch at the shore below. After luring the lurker down there, I used Bend Will to get them to fight each other, and watched on as the Netch savagely beat down the lurker before I ran away across the water in my god boots. Which was appropriate, because I'd just pulled off a bloody miracle.
With the stones cleansed, Storm finally gave up his pie recipe. Old Hermamora said yum and stuck his tongue right in it. Freya did a celebratory dab and I learned the last word of Bend Will, which would allow me to control dragons. I'll get you, Mirak! I made my way through the chapters of the book by collecting more books, bookception, and reached a word wall where the dragon Saratar appeared to challenge me. Not today, buddy. You're my bish now. Now, fly me to your master. I said, fly me to... Okay, fine. You can have your fun. Happy now? We ascended to the top of the highest peak. I jumped out of my Uber, and it was time for a showdown. Now, the main reason I was even doing any of this was to get Mirax staff. So the first thing I tried to do was to go invisible and then see if I could pickpocket him. 500 IQ plays. Didn't work. I think I needed a different strategy. With no staff, there was no sense in fighting him on the ground, since Mirak has a gimmick where he will kill each of the dragons in turn and absorb their souls, healing back up in the process. So the most effective way for me to combat that was to jump back on Saratar and let him try to take out one of the other dragons, then let Mirak devour Saratar, and then cast Bend Will on the remaining dragon to bait Mirak into eating him too. With all that out of the way, our glorious battle could begin. If, by glorious, you mean using Become Ethereal and running around him like a crackhead to slowly poison him before cowering behind a rock to recover. Not only did this take an absolute age as he constantly whirlwind sprints away at the start, but I ran into a big problem at the end. To finish the fight, you need to get his health below a certain level, but when he gets close to it, he starts using a heal spell, which the Ebony Mail and Poison Rune alone couldn't out damage. And I forgot to rest to reset the cooldown on Mora's Agony. Ah, <sighs> well that was 45 minutes well spent. I did the entire saga again, but this time after resting, and jumped in for round two. Even with Mora's Agony, I still had to rely on getting his health down first, and then trapping him somewhere I could cast a spell and stagger him, preventing him from healing up. Which was easier said than done, but after a couple more failed attempts, this is how it went. Thank you, RNG gods. Thank you. Emmaus gave Mirak the licking of his life, praised me for a job well done, and I finally had my hands on the last item of my setup. Mirak's staff, which squirts a smaller version of Mora's agony on the ground. I just disgusted myself by using the word squirt there. Sorry, just gonna go and throw up. Come ride a dragon, and fly to Skulldaffin, and enter its heavenly gates. Where the skies are alive, when all the winds cries, yes, Sovereign God awaits. Sovereign God awaits. Under deep, below the dark, the hidden keep. Tower Mazak. Sick bars, fam. Although the game likes to direct you to Alftand for the Elder Scroll, I prefer reaching Blackreach through Mazincha Left. 
I had to clear out some bandits and a bunch of machines en route, but other than that, it was a straight shot to the prettiest area in the game. I was here for literally one minute. Sorry, devs. Up in the Tower of Mazark, I definitely didn't Google the answer to this puzzle and got my hands on an Elder Scroll. Mate, stop following me. Before progressing further, I decided I'd probably held on to the Golden Claw long enough now, so went to Riverwood to return it. Thank you so much for taking care of those thieves. Bruh. Okay, now I'm ready. I stood at the time wound, read the scroll, and watched an old movie. This picture quality is awful. 3 out of 10. Still, I did learn the Dragon Wren shout. Very educational. 9 out of 10. Upon returning to the real world, Alduin showed up, and it was time for the first of our mighty battles. Although this fight took a long time, it basically boiled down to a loop of bringing him down to earth with Dragonrend, shooting Mouldy Cream at him, and keeping him locked there while Parthenax joined in, using the word wall and become ethereal for cover. Kind of like this. With the World Eater out of the equation for now, Pasta Socks told me that in order to finish him for good, I would need to catch myself a dragon, and that Dragon's Reach would be the perfect place to do it. He also let me meditate on the word Fame, which increases HP regen while Become Ethereal is active. Which was nice. I asked the old Bulgruff about using his living room to trap a dragon, and he said, sure, if the Greybeards are down. The Greybeards said, Sure, if Ulfric and Tullius are down. Ulfric said, Sure, if Tullius is down. And Tullius said, God damn it, I guess we're all having a meeting then. Well, this is awkward, guys. Anyone else want to join? I made some arbitrary decisions I didn't care about at all to determine the fate of an entire country. Esburn taught me the shout to capture a dragon, and I was almost ready for the final showdown. But first... I'm quite lucky in that I don't have many regular trolls on my channel. In fact, it's really just this guy. But don't you worry, buddy. I've taken your comments into consideration when writing this next chapter. After meeting a boy and doing a murder, I met a lady named Astrid who asked me to do some more murder. So I did. Three, in fact. And she said, not enough, do some more. So I did. Oh, and there were some bandits too, I guess. Oh, look, I'm the listener now. Nobody seemed to know if I'd committed the ideal amount of murders yet, so I did a couple more just to be sure, and then a man in a cave asked me to kill an emperor, so I went to a wedding. I'm just so overwhelmed. Such kindness. Please. And a Merry Christmas to you too. Victoria, no! You're welcome. You can never do too much murder, so I murdered this guy in plain sight before going to the Dawnstar Sanctuary and murdering this guy. It's cool though, because now I have a horse don't need it. I spoke to a man in Makar for some information and left him alive. Just kidding, I murdered him. And then I went and murdered the gourmet and dragged his body into a corner. After wearing a nice hat and making some soup, I murdered the emperor, who turned out not to be the emperor, which was awkward. So I went back to the sanctuary to find everyone being murdered. So I joined in and then murdered Astrid in a suitable fashion. The night mother said, you're still one murder short. So I headed out to the Kataraya, snuck into the Emperor's private quarters, and gave him the most dignified death I could. A new hand touches the beacon. Oh, for God's sake. Motier showered me in money, which I spent on home decor to make the sanctuary even more murderous, and the Brotherhood was done. Ah, let's go bag as a dragon. After hitting 80 and smithing, which would allow me to upgrade my armor some more, and activating the Lady Stone, which increases your HP and stamina recovery speed, I headed up to Whiterun to tame and ride a dragon. 
Which would be kind of cool if I hadn't already done all that in the DLC. Oi, come here! You went to a great deal of trouble to put me in this humiliating position. <laughs> yes, yes, who's been a naughty boy? Now, fly me into a cutscene. Upon arriving at Skuldaffen, I used Become Ethereal to run past the mobs, dealt with a bottleneck of spiders, stealthily handled all the door puzzles, <clears throat> and spent 12 minutes keeping a Draugr Death Overlord trapped in a corner while I slowly worked his health away to obtain a Diamond Claw. Outside, I sprinted past everything to reach the portal before Nakrin could close it, and I finally reached my destination. Sovereign Guard. At this time of year, at this time of day, in this part of the country, localized entirely within your Skyrim. Yes. In another Simpsons reference, Old Man shouts at clouds, and I faced off against Sun, a mighty warrior who wished to test my strength. Sure thing, hope you like getting Tenta killed. You fought well. If you say so. I'd planned to chill for a sec inside the Halls of Valor and enjoy a nice roasted ox leg or two. But the heroes of old had other ideas, so we rushed back outside, cleared away the mists, and prepared to tear the World Eater a new one. Jeez, the enthusiasm is overwhelming, guys. With the world saved, I returned to Skyrim to be hailed as the King of the Dragons, said my goodbyes to Parthenax and Odaving, and my quest was over. I had beaten Skyrim with poison only. Oh, wait, there's one last thing I forgot to do. Perfection. Lydia, oh Lydia. Sorry I got rid of you But all that clean, fresh mountain air Will make your skin look prettier 